you see 10 troubles coming down the road, you can be sure nine will run into the ditch before they reach you. President Calvin Coolidge. Nine may have passed them by, but at the end of the Roaring Twenties, the 10th hit Americans right between the eyes. The 1929 stock market crash brought prosperity to a sudden halt. Banks failed, businesses collapsed, and the United States entered the worst economic crisis in its history. By 1932, one quarter of the nation's workforce was out of work. People stood on bread lines and slept in parks, rode cattle cars and huddled in railroad yards, lived in tin shacks or junked cars. Children scoured city dumps for food. I remember seeing a few people on the corner selling papers, uh, three cents and five cents. Uh, I saw a few people on the avenue selling apples. And some people begged. They went from door to door asking for money. It was a very, very hard time. The economic situation was uh, very bad at that time. The banks closed and people couldn't get their money out. The Depression years in the 1930s confused American people. They'd always lived by the notion that they could achieve the American dream if they worked hard, if they saved, uh, if they followed the rules. But in the 1930s, it wasn't possible. This is the story of the Great Depression, of the people who lived through it, of the president who struggled to end it, and of the legacies it handed down to all of us. President Calvin Coolidge had a simple philosophy about government. Do nothing, or failing that, do very little. Four-fifths of all our troubles would disappear if we would sit down and keep still. Coolidge could afford to follow that advice. For in the 1920s, the United States enjoyed the greatest economic boom that the world had ever seen. In a single decade, industrial production almost doubled wages rose and work hours went down so many Americans had more money and time to snap up new consumer products like automobiles and radios the business of the American people is business and the president made it his business to unleash the free market with the help of his secretary of the Treasury Andrew Mellon Coolidge slashed corporate and personal taxes allowing the rich to increase their share of national wealth by 1929, 5% of American families controlled 30% of the nation's income. Because the prosperity is concentrated into a smaller number of people, it's harder and harder as the 20s go on for ordinary people to consume the enormous number of goods that the economy is producing. As inventories piled up and manufacturers cut back on production, corporations and individual investors plowed their money into the stock market. The stock market is located mainly in New York City. It allows various Americans with money to buy bits and pieces of corporations. The corporations will sell stock in their own company. In the 1920s, there were not very many regulations that pertain to the owning and selling of stocks, at least far fewer than there are today. And one of the main things that happened was that people were allowed to buy stocks on what was called on the margin. That is, they didn't need a great deal of money to purchase uh, stock. If stock cost, uh, let's say, $100 a share, people could, could take $10 to buy a share. This meant that people could buy enormous quantities of stock for very little money. They were eager to do so because stock prices were rising. A speculative fever seized investors as people traded stories of humble street peddlers who became overnight millionaires by playing the market. 
But the binge of speculation and buying on margin had inflated the price of stocks way beyond their real value. And by 1929, stockbrokers had lent out billions of dollars in loans to their customers, money they would never see again.